it is expected that in the year 2017, more than 252, 700,000, over a quarter million cases of breast cancer will be diagnosed. Now, what if you knew steps that could prevent your risk or a loved one's risk of being among that massive number of diagnoses? Well, that's this week's Faith and Friends feature on Dr. Trudy Pieper, and the topic for the show is breast cancer. Let's start with our show with the scripture that's often connected with our health, Jeremiah 30, verse 17. I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast, Zion, for whom no one cares. God truly cares about your health. You're not an outcast in his eyes. And he desires you to live a full life that is full and rewarding. Too often a cancer diagnosis is cutting back the years to live with a loved one here on earth. What are simple tools that you could put into place today that just may serve as keys to living the full life that Christ has intended? Well, here's Jennifer with Dr. Trudy Pieper. Approximately one in eight women will be diagnosed with, will develop breast cancer in her lifetime. In 2017, American Cancer Society estimate numbers are 250,000 new cases of invasive breast cancer will be diagnosed in women. What are the risk factors? What are the treatment or not necessarily the treatment, but the prevention options? What are things that you can be doing to minimize your chance to be in that number group? Dr. Trudy Pieper joins us to talk about a subject that is affecting so many people. If, if you haven't had breast cancer, you know somebody who has, a family member has, it really affects everybody in some way. It's huge in all generations, but we know that 66% of women over 55 will develop breast cancer in mm -hmm. the United States. And what I want to make sure people understand, uh, and was one of the purpose of, of writing my book, um, Prevention is a Cure, cure for, for Cancer, cancer yeah. was that prevention will cure cancer. Mm -hmm. It is not a death sentence. You do not have to have cancer. You can prevent cancer. And there are just some things that we want to talk about that are very easy for people to do. And um, when we get into uh, talking about something that's one of our favorites is green tea. <laughs> Jennifer and I are green tea drinkers. <laughs> and we know that by drinking green tea every day, you, can, uh, you, know, uh, thir you have a 37% chance, less chance of having cancer by drinking green tea every day. What a simple thing. Wow, that's right. Just uh, changing out some of those habits. And I can tell you truthfully, by firsthand experience, once you were willing to change those habits, the first couple of days, the first couple of weeks, you might think, I don't like this, but once you get into it, it's all gonna become normal and you're gonna find yourself wanting things like that green tea, because your body is gonna want the things that are good for your health. All right, let's talk more about things that people can do um, as they, uh, recognize the breast cancer risk that exists. Well, and one of the key things is knowing your risk. And so do you need to drink green tea? I pro and you think we all do, but if you've had, you started your periods early, um, most women start their menses around average age is 12. So if you were prior to 12 when you started having your, your monthly cycle, you're more at risk. If you started late menopause, most women start menopause at age 50. If you were over 50 when you started your menopause, that's another risk sign that you may have a, a greater chance of having cancer. Hmm. Um, first pregnancy over age 30 is another sign that you should maybe be a little more aware, drink your green tea uh, for breast cancer. The use of hormonal birth control is a huge factor. If you've used birth control at any time during your lifetime, uh, you're going to be more at risk. The Journal of American Metal Association did a study with 46,000 women who had used progestin, which is the synthetic form of progesterone, uh, and they found that they had an 800, 800 percent chance, increased chance of breast wow. cancer by wow. taking the artificial hormones. The New England Journal of Medicine did a study with 70,000 nurses who did hormone replacement therapy for five years or more, and it, it, it increased their risk for breast cancer by 40%. Wow, wow. So, so these are things that people are doing early on. Like talking about the birth control, people think they are doing something to help themselves in the short term, but in the long term, it can really create some problems. It can, because one of the another risk factors <laughs> is if your hormones are not balanced. We need an equal amount of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Well, by artificially changing that balance so you cannot conceive, mm -hmm. you are disrupting your hormones for a period of years that now increases your chances of, of breast cancer. 
Another factor, and, and, and it's key in the United States of America, is obesity. Mm -hmm. If you're 10 pounds overweight, it, you will have more estrogens in your body, which then makes you estrogen dominant, and also then will disrupt the balance, which causes you to be, have a more greater chance of having cancer. Um, another one is xenoestrogens. These are the artificial chemicals that mask or look like estrogen, and we are surrounded mm -hmm. with them. They are uh, in plastics, the BPA, which is the polycarbonate plastics that hold containers for food and for drinks and beverages, all exude off uh, this BPA gas, which is stronger than our estrogen. Wow. Now, are you even talking about like the water bottles that we yes. purchase? So should we not even be purchasing water from water bottles, do you think? It, Just it use is, our own bottles? You could, it's best to use your own bottle. Glass or stainless steel is the absolute best. But in the convenience of the world today, we all have from time to time. The key is that what they found is if it sets in the sun or is heated, that is when the plastic mm -hmm. will leach out the, the BPA. So now is the time to get those bottles out of the car. I admit I did keep them in my car this yeah. winter when it was cold, right. but uh, no so, more. No more. In the summertime, it's really not, it's not a good time to do that. Um, also, pesticides, you know, they're spraying mm. all of our, the roadsides and then the foods that we eat has the pesticide spray. That's actually a form of estrogen, mm. even on organic foods. The, the, they say it's all natural. Well, yeah, because they're using a form of estrogen to, mm. to block the pesticides from the plants. Uh, meat with hormones, which disrupts uh, the balance of many young girls who start their periods at six or eight now. Wow. It's because they've been wow. eating hormone-induced meats, uh, beef, poultry, that they've used to enhance the growth of the animals, and that greatly affects them. Uh, food additives and cosmetics contain something called paraben, and paraben is an, a form of estrogen. Hmm. You're absorbing right in through your skin. Hmm. The, 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 the list goes on and on. I mean, you just mentioned things that um, some we can control, some we cannot control. Right. Uh, but we will talk about the, the uh, preventative tips coming up that you can do because you can't control all of these, but you can try to combat some of them. Exactly. So there are more risk factors, poor hormone balance. Oh, you did mention that briefly. A little bit briefly, but we, uh, most people don't realize that we have three forms of estrogen in our body. And it's E1, E2, and E3. And E1 is estrone. Um, found uh, on estrogen dominant women who have PCOS, if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is huge uh, in this country, it's because you have too much E1 estrogen not balanced in your system. Um, E2 is the most potent and most active. It stimulates tissue growth. It's the bad dog. It's mm. the one that causes most of the cancers to grow. Um, even testosterone, women who have more testosterone in the body than estrogen will convert into E2, estrogen, and E3 is the weakest. It's called estriol, and um, it's made in both the ovaries and the adrenals, but that's the one we wanna have the most of. If you have the most of E3 in your body, it'll stop cancer growth in your body. You can get it in food. Um, lentils, soybeans, raspberries, strawberries, sweet potatoes, yams, and eggplant all have estriol in them. Oh, and I just well, ate actually, sweet potatoes there last you go. night, so I'm feeling better about you myself. <laughs> and it, the receptor sites love E3, and it'll go in and it'll block the receptor sites so that the estrone and estriol do not uh, enter those. Hmm. Um, a few more deficiencies that are probably more common than people realize. Right. Um, a couple of them, main is vitamin D deficiency. Everybody, um, especially in the United States, is vitamin D deficient. Uh, part of it's because we're indoors more, we're doing more electronics. Mm -hmm. Part of it's because we use sunscreen all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, it blocks out the vitamin D that our body needs uh, for healthy bodies, minds, uh, aids our spirit, our thinking, because if you have a lack of vitamin D, you could have a seasonal affective disorder, sad, so you feel mm -hmm. sad and down. Um, another is iodine deficiency. We don't uh, live near the ocean, so we're not getting a lot of seafood. Well, I think we just need to change that then. We I do need too. to move I near love the ocean. It. Let's do it. <laughs> One of my favorite places to be, the wind <laughs> on the beach. But iodine is, is critical. One of the most uh, places that we hold most of the iodine in our bodies is in our breast. Breast tissue is very dense with iodine. But you cannot absorb iodine without selenium. 
So if you have selenium deficiency, it doesn't matter how much iodine you get, you're not going to be able to absorb it. An easy way for selenium is, is Brazil nuts, a handful mm. of Brazil nuts, and you have your selenium for the day huh. to do that. And finally, uh, something that's getting to be more and more well known is methylation issues. We're finding that many people have a genetic gene, MTHFR, that does not allow them to absorb uh, B vitamins, in particular B6, B9, which is folate, and B12. And without those, you can't make hormones. Hmm. So if you're not absorbing your Bs, uh, then you will also be not making the hormones that you need to be making. So there are um, things that uh you can, there are tools that can be used to, to uh, determine breast cancer, and we'll talk about those in a moment, but let's jump now to the preventative things, because you've just mentioned all of the risks. So people at home might be thinking, oh, check mark me on that one and that one, uh, that's it. I, I am a high risk factor and I am likely going to get breast cancer, but there are things, proactive things that can take place that will prevent that, that risk from happening. Exactly. Uh, once you determine you have the risk factors and if you do any kind of testing or examination and, and you confirm that, um, you need to move ahead quickly as possible on prevention tips. But these are easy things to do. You just have to incorporate them, incorporate them make them a part of your daily routine, be intentional, and you can stop any progression of cancer in your body. The first one is flax seeds. Um, ground flax seeds, which also have omega-3s, which are great mm. for our brains, um, bind estrogens um, in the colon, which do not allow them to be reabsorbed back into the body. So again, if our estrogens are out of balance, which with all the xenoestrogen we're getting, we have way too many estrogens in our body, we bind them with ground flax seeds, we eliminate them through uh, our bowel movements, and therefore it's one of the easiest things you can do to stop cancer from growth. Yeah, do, do we put the flax seeds in our smoothies? Um, how, do we, how do we incorporate those into our diet? You can incorporate them just about any way. It takes 10 grams, and so a big heaping tablespoon is 10 grams. Dump that in your smoothies, put it on your oatmeal, throw it in your yogurt, um, because a great combination is yogurt and flax seeds because now you're getting probiotics and your flax seeds. Uh, sprinkle them on your salads. There's just, a, a, just be creative. There isn't, I don't think there's any way, and if nothing else, put them in a little bit of water and drink them. Mm -hmm. To do that. Okay. What, what else do we have as uh, preventative measures? Well, one that, that's kind of interesting because um, in Japan, the women there have the lowest breast cancer rates mm -hmm. in the world. So you're thinking, okay, what are the Japanese doing? Besides drinking green tea, um, they do a I'll lot get of... get my green tea here right now. you say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they do a lot of isoflavonoids, and isoflavonoids, particularly soy, uh, will absolutely stop cancer growth and prevents um, that it from growing in the body, in the breast uh, it, particularly. And what do we do with soy is you need uh, non-GMO and organic, and you can find it legumes, beans, like soybeans, alfalfa, clover, licorice root, um, all those are great sources of some flavonoids, and you need to do that daily. 20 grams a day is, is what an, an average Japanese woman uses of her soy. Mm. And non-GMO soy, yes. which is difficult to find in the United yes. States, but it is there. It, it is, is there. there, and that's the one you want to find that will do the, 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 the help the most. Uh, in America, we tend to do one to three grams a day, and mm. opposed to the 20 grams that the Japanese mm. women use to do that. Wow. Uh, another big one which really simple to do is if, if you like um, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, mm -hmm. kale, all those are cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables have an ingredient called indole-3-carbonyl, also known as DIM, mm -hmm. D-I-M, and they break down the estrogen and allow your body to excrete it through the urinary system. So get your flax seeds out for uh, the, uh, the bowel movements and now your urinary system to excrete them out. Um, it inhibits the growth of estrogen by 60% mm. in your body. So daily amounts of cruciferous vegetables will eliminate the excess estrogens in your body. Omega-3 fatty acids, you did mention those, the importance of that. Green tea, we talked about that as well. Bioidentical progesterone. Um, having re 
since we know that we're estrogen dominant, most women, almost all women are because of the influences in our body, um, rebalancing it with progesterone, which you should have more progesterone than estrogen in your body, and we're all deficient. Um, the, the problem with progesterone is that stress and sugar mm -hmm. are the two leading causes that will make you have less progesterone. Mm -hmm. But if you can balance that with some natural bioidentical progesterone, you can make that, um, that ratio higher and better and improve your health. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that it has been compounded so that you know exactly how much progesterone you're getting. So many times I'll find women who have gone to the health food store and they'll buy over-the-counter progesterone, which is fine, but it doesn't, you don't know how much you're getting. So you're going to apply this, and is that a lot? Is it a little? Is it not? Most women need to get 28.6 uh, grams of uh, progesterone in each uh, time they use it to get the benefit. So making sure that you have a source that has labeled on there how much progesterone is in there is important to do that. And then secondly is you want to get a source that is topical because the, anything that, that you ingest orally People's digestion is, we, we don't digest our foods well. Mm -hmm. And so we don't know how much you're going to absorb into your body if you take it orally. Whereas if you do it topically, it's all going to be absorbed immediately in the bloodstream and you're going to get the benefit of the full amount of dosage mm -hmm. to do that. And that sounds like something that, you know, you want to talk with Dr. Trudy or you want to talk with your doctor. I, I, I may be mistaken, but I actually think there's a pharmacist in Findlay who specially compounds that. He does right. testing and that kind of thing. So, you know, these are, well, some of these preventive techniques you can just do on your own, but then there's other ones that you want to make sure you're, you're working with the right person so that you've got the right plan in place because it will be worth it down the road to do that. Absolutely, and that's an easy way. I mean, you, you rub it on your skin, particularly I, I recommend my patients rub on the bottom of their feet every night before they go to bed. Hmm. So it's easy absorbed, it's not a problem, and you can, within six months, you can absolutely rebalance your amounts of progesterone to equal out. And progesterone has so many great uses in the body in addition to balancing your hormones. Uh, water retention, uh, which a lot of women have, is caused by not having enough progesterone. It gives a feeling of just calmness in your body when you have enough progesterone. Hmm. It, helps with the thyroid. If you're having hypo or slow thyroid, it could be because you don't mm. have enough progesterone. Um, vitamin D3, that's one we have probably all heard about a lot. Um, but uh, vitamin D3, iodine, selenium, and then meth methylization. Methyl something, yes. Yeah, and we've really talked about that. Uh, the vitamin D is so critical that you can reduce breast cancer by 50%. If mm. every woman in America would use five thousand I use of vitamin D every day, we would reduce breast cancer by 50%. And we're talking the D3. Yes, this the is D3. D3. So it's an easy thing to do. Usually it's a pill. Um, and it's usually really small. Oh, it's, it's tiny. Just tiny. It's easy. easy to, again, incorporate in your daily routine and lower your breast cancer. Um, iodine, the Japanese, again, who are our, our we want to be like the Japanese women mm. because their breast cancer is so low, is they take 13 milligrams of iodine every, of, of, I'm sorry, of, yeah, of iodine every day. So, again, it reduces their amount uh, along with the soy of breast cancer. Selenium is needed to absorb iodine, Brazil nuts. And the methylization is the vitamins B6 and 9 and 12 that you need to be able to absorb. Buy that in a methylated form. It'll say methyl vitamins on it. And that's what you need so you know your body's absorbing those. All right, at this point you may be thinking, wow, there's a lot of notes that I forgot to take. There's a lot of information that's really important. We want to remind you that you can go to our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com, or our YouTube page, WTLW TV 44. You can rewatch this entire interview, and then you can get all of the notes that you need. Of course, you can also contact Dr. Trudy at her office, Phoenix Wellness Center. Um, she has another doctor that works there as well. Phoenix Wellness for you is is the website. Johnstown, Ohio may seem a little bit far away, but it is not really that far, and especially when it comes to your health, it is definitely worth it. Now, even closer than Johnstown is Bluffton, where Dr. Chapel is, and he offers something that is actually another uh, a testing. Everybody's heard of mammography. Yes. Uh, a mammogram, that's what you're told to get. That's how you check for breast cancer. But have you heard of a thermogram? And is that um, an alternative that you may want to seek? Personally, I've actually get thermograms instead of mammograms. And uh, Dr. Chapel in Bluffton does offer these, and you are a proponent of them. Absolutely. Um, 
information that you can get from a thermogram is so much greater. Uh, you can detect cancer eight years prior mm. to a mammogram with a thermogram. And the thermogram basically, uh, it's a heat picture. They take a picture, a non-invasive. I know that you've had them done. It's very simple. You undress from the, the, uh, the waist up. Mm -hmm. They take a picture. And it's a thermal uh, picture that detects patterns of heat throughout the body. And the way that works is that uh, a cancer tumor is very vascular which means it has a lot of portals um, for the blood flow to go into it because they grow very, very fast. So it needs more blood to do that. Well, on the thermogram, that's going to show up as a really red hot spot hmm. uh, on the breast where it's feeding more blood into it because it being vascular. So that's what they really look for, a picture of red or blue or green spots on your breast, and the red one's the one that, that you should be aware of do that. It's FDA approved for screening, 1982. Uh, it was approved as a, a way that, it's, uh, that you can be screened for breast cancer. It's, um, it's great for dense breast tissue. And uh, if you have uh, lots of coffee drinkers, have a lot of you know, cysts in their breast, mm -hmm. and the density of that makes it very difficult for a mammogram, an MRI, or a CAT scan to see any kind of, of cancer growth there. Uh, we always say it's like looking for a snowflake in a snowstorm because it's so dense you can't see through that. Um, another problem with mammography is that they compress the breasts down. When they compress it down and they shoot radiation into it, that radiation now is more compressed, more powerful, and does more damage to the breast tissue at the time of the radiation. So with mammography, you have no radiation that does that. Um, it, the early detection it can do as small as a pinpoint in thermography, mm -hmm. where a mammogram needs 12, 12 uh, millimeters before it can pick it up on the scan to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And it is simple, it is um, painless, and it's very quick. Yes. It's very quick. Um, like I say, Dr. Chapel is an office locally where you can get that done. There also are um, other places throughout the state of Ohio, Columbus, Dayton, other areas. And I imagine they'll probably pop up more and more as it becomes more popular. I think so, too. It's inexpensive. Um, the cost is someplace between, I don't know, $125, $150 to have it done. More and more insurances will uh, cover it. Uh, you have to check with yours to see for sure. But even that is such a good investment uh, to know, you know what your breast health at that early stage. Uh, another thing that's really, as far as prevention and being able to jump right on the bandwagon and, and making sure that you don't have breast cancer, are saliva hormone testing. Mm -hmm. And we do those in our office all the time, and they're easy to do. Um, it reveals, I like saliva over blood test because it reveals both what you make and what you take. Mm -hmm. Whereas a blood test is gonna pull at one time and they're gonna say what you are using at that moment and not what is stored. So uh, with a saliva test, you spit four times in one day. So we're measuring the amounts of hormones throughout the whole entire day, not just one spot check. Because we know first thing in the morning, that's when your hormones are the highest. So 30 minutes after you wake up, we have you spit in a tube. Uh, before each meal, you spit in this tube and fill this up. Then that's sent off to a lab, and it comes back and it lets us know a couple of things. It's going to test those three estrogens we talked about before. And we need to have the, the E3, the weaker estrogen, the highest one. So there's a little, it's called estrogen quotient, EQ, that where we take the E3 and divide it by the other two, and that number, the lower that number is, the higher the risk of cancer. So it's mm. a great determinant. Another one we've already talked about is the ratio of progesterone to estrogen. You're supposed to have more progesterone. If they do that ratio and you find out your ratio of progesterone to estrogen is low, you have a higher risk of cancer also mm. to do those. So they're easy uh, to do, um, again, non-invasive, pretty inexpensive. You can do a three hormone test for right around $100 most mm. of the times with saliva. Saliva testing, thermo thermograms, lots of prevention opportunities, options, flaxseed, D3, all kinds of other things. You know what? It's not a lost cause. Don't just think because your mother had breast cancer or because you're hearing about breast cancer all the time that you are, it's inevitable. Uh, you may be at risk, yes. You may be in that risk factor, but there are things that you are able to do to uh, lower those numbers. And if you, of course, end up with breast cancer, there are other things that you can do as well. Dr. Trudy Pieper, Phoenix Wellness, thank you so much for being with us on this very important topic. Uh, you are watching Faith and Friends. 
Dr. Trudy just presented a lot of information and perhaps you didn't have a chance to take notes or you know of a friend who could use watching this program. It's available online at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. You're also able to purchase a copy of any of our Faith and Friends broadcasts for just $15 by calling us here at TV44, 419-339-439. 4444. Before we go, another reminder, this week we are accepting auction donations, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. This year's fundraising auction is September the 9th, and we are in need of volunteers. We have shifts as short as two hours available, so for more information, call that same number, 419-339-44, or you can email auction at WTLW.com. Before we go, one final look at our scripture for this week. Comes to us from Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, but I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. He certainly wants to restore you, um, whatever relationship or health that you have that you need to turn over to him. Have a great week. The time is now to bring your donations to TV44. We're gearing up for this year's auction, and we need your items now to make it a success. Furniture, collectibles, antiques, tools, vehicles, mowers, anything of value. Drop-offs accepted Monday through Thursday, 10 till 3. Call for Friday hours, 419-339-4444. Donate your items now to the TV44 auction. Donate your car, boat, motorcycle, or mower to the TV44 auction. You'll benefit from a tax deduction, but more importantly, you'll be part of the ministry of TV44. Call today to find out more.